Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. Good evening. A new warning from scientists about the cost of rising sea levels. A report released today says it could cost $50 billion to repair damaged coastal infrastructure in Queensland and recommends preventative action begins immediately. Queenslanders won't forget the devastation caused by Cyclone Yazi in 2011 and extreme weather events could get worse. A Climate Change Council's report predicts sea levels will increase between 40 centimetres and one metre in the next century. It says the cost of coastal flooding in southeast Queensland could double by 2030 and quadruple by 2070. The report says that between $11.3 and $17 billion worth of commercial and light industrial buildings are at risk. So we're already locked in to a reasonable amount of sea level rise and because of that we need better coastal planning to adapt. At the moment lots of our local governments are on their own and struggling. And the report stresses that local, state and federal government need to work more closely with each other. Already some councils are moving to rezone flood risk areas, something Bayside resident Dave Riley believes is short-sighted. The council has decided to proceed by putting the onus on the individual property owner rather than dealing with the, the threat of flooding. Mr Riley says the rezoning threatens to dramatically increase his insurance premiums. A spokesperson from the Insurance Council of Australia said that owners of low-lying coastal properties which are permanently protected by well-designed and well-maintained mitigation will face far less expensive insurance premiums. Gabby Boland, QUT News. Queensland's assets could be leased to private companies for up to 99 years as part of a new government effort to generate revenue. The LNP's privatisation proposal aims to address the $80 billion of debt it says Labor left the state. Treasurer Tim Nichols announced the LNP's reviewed proposal to sell assets, boasting compliance of leases with the Queensland plan. Mr Nichols told a breakfast in Brisbane today the government is looking at potentially leasing ports, power stations and distribution assets for a period of 50 to 99 years. People do prefer and do understand the idea of a lease where ultimately the asset is retained and the ownership of the asset is retained by the people of Queensland. The Queensland Council of Unions executive meeting rejected it as a desperate revision. This is not an economic strategy, this is an election strategy. This is not the government listening, this is a government trying to get its way by making a sneaky announcement designed to have the same effects. The QCU says it'll oppose the sale and lease of assets such as the Gladstone and Townsville ports and Mount Isa rail line into next year's state election. The LNP previously promised not to sell the poles and wires of Queensland's publicly owned electricity system. The QCU's major concern is that the proposed leases will push prices up and send profits overseas. The LNP criticised privatisation of assets when the Labor government publicly floated then QR National in 2010. Shadow Treasurer Curtis Pitt says the government's actions show they've already decided, despite claiming they'll seek a mandate from voters at next year's election. Isabella Vecchio, QUT News. Brisbane City Council says its Eat Safe program is proving to be a recipe for success. It says figures for the past year show the hospitality industry is continuing to maintain high food, health and safety standards. Brisbane's Eat Safe rating system has been informing residents since 2010 about the extent to which businesses comply with food safety laws. The City Council's lifestyle chairman says the regulations are strict but fair. We have 44 Eat Safe inspectors that are out on the ground doing the regular proactive but also the reactive complaints. Uh, and obviously uh, it is uh, very common for cockroaches and rodents and Brisbane res restaurants need to be very clear of this. The Eat Safe program provides businesses with a rating of between 0 and 5. Businesses receiving a star rating of between 3 and 5 are deemed acceptable by Brisbane City Council. More than 90% of them have achieved this. Those results are then published online. One cafe owner says every restaurant should have a five-star rating. You can make any of your customers sick if you don't follow the procedures that have been put in place so easily by Brisbane City Council. 
In the last financial year alone, there have been more than 6,000 inspections, over 900 complaints and fines totaling just over $700,000. But opposition leader Milton Dick says council has dropped the ball. The council needs to allocate more funding and more resources, particularly in the area, areas of compliance and regulatory services. This is one area where we have seen cutbacks um, in staff and also resources. But both sides of council emphasise the need to work with businesses to educate them about their obligations. Damien Staveley, QUT News. Prime Minister Tony Abbott led a unique initiative to combat truancy in Arnhem Land today. He says school attendance is pivotal to improve conditions in Indigenous communities. This is the walking school bus in the Boy community. The bus went door to door encouraging kids to join the trip to school. This morning, Tony Abbott and his education minister joined the anti-truancy push. Well obviously the kids do need to go to school and uh, if getting them to school means uh, walking in the streets with a loud hailer, I guess it's an a innovative way of making sure that it happens. I think that this would certainly get me to school if uh, people walked past my house and <laughs> shouted at me with a loud, loud hailer. It's... The government wants to see a dramatic lift in school attendances across all Indigenous communities. Already, 73 communities have attendance offices and more are planned. The drop in truancy in the Northern Territory this year was initially encouraging. In Term 1, the attendance rate increased 9%, but in Term 2, that dropped back to 5.5%. Today marks the halfway point of the Prime Minister's week-long stay in Arnhem Land. Alex Trezai's QT News. Bean Lee is getting a makeover into a place of cultural exchange and activity. The Logan City Council says the ambitious project is also great news for jobs. Today marks the beginning of 12 months of construction that will see the heart of Beanley transformed into a vibrant community hub. Logan City Mayor says the project is an exciting revitalisation and creates a platform for future growth. Logan's focus is on promoting Logan like there's no tomorrow, creating investment and creating jobs for today's generations and future generations. The federal member for Ford says it will create enormous opportunities for young people in the community and will create tremendous opportunities for local businesses. Over a thousand jobs will be created in due course as a result of this uh, redevelopment project. Mr Manon says several hundred jobs will be created in the construction phase alone. The project will bring with it a range of social benefits including improved safety and cohesion throughout the community. Logan City Council has allocated almost one million dollars towards the upgrade of safety cameras in the area. Mayor Parker says she's looking forward to enhancing the area for the immediate and wider community. Kate Darville, QUT News. There was a very different expo in Brisbane today. Guide Dogs Queensland showcased their latest training aids and technology with the help of a few special people. What shape is that one? Aston is a bright, energetic and funny three-year-old. It's hard to believe a genetic condition has left him almost completely blind. Oh, that's another rectangle. That's where Guide Dogs Queensland Early Learning Centre comes in. Aston joined their program at nine months old. Now his rainbow coloured cane is a part of daily life helping him to feel independent and mobile. Oh, um, I think much more um, confident um, in moving through space. Um, he gets lots of support from the guide dogs. David will eventually lose his sight. He's spent the last week learning how to use an ultra cane, which is equipped with an ultrasound system. It just gives you that little more feedback than what the normal cane does, because the normal cane, you actually have to touch the object with the cane. Sensors give David protection from all angles and more independence. Before, uh, there was something poking out like a tree branch, you'd walk straight into it. Today's expo is for anyone in the community to experience the tools and equipment that assist those who are blind or vision impaired. Guide Dog says people of any age or level of impairment should reach out. Don't be afraid of contacting Guide Dogs Queensland. You know, we provide a lot of services and the range can be quite surprising. 
proving there's more to guide dogs than wagging tails. Whitney Angel, QUT News. Brent Harvey's AFL tribunal charges have been dropped following evidence presented by Geelong player Joel Selwood. North Melbourne have thanked Selwood for his help in clearing the kangaroo veteran's name. Harvey had been charged with rough conduct and given a one-game suspension. Joel Selwood's actions mean Harvey will now be able to play in Saturday's preliminary final against the Swans. Oh, I think he just came in and you know told the truth, so it's fantastic. If I see him out uh, after we're playing a grand final, I will certainly buy him a beer. Look, I'm just I'm so happy. I can't express my feeling. Uh, Maybe the smile does a little bit, but I'm just so happy to be playing with the boys this week. Selwood participated in Wacky Wednesday celebrations this morning with fellow Geelong teammates, dressing up as former controversial Richmond Ford Jake King. Last night, Selwood was selected as the captain of the All-Australian team. Gary Ablett also made the team, following in his father's footsteps by winning an eighth straight selection record. Meanwhile, Jonathan Thurston was voted the best player in the NRL competition for the third time last night at the Player Association Awards. The dispute between Thurston's team and the NRL, however, has intensified, with the Cowboys copying a $10,000 fine for criticising the NRL judiciary. As a coach and the club have no faith that there's any consistency in what they do, so we felt it's better to just uh, um, move on. In other NRL news, Axe NRL star Todd Carney has been handed a lifeline by English Super League outfit Catalan Dragons, signing a three-year deal. Bella Treston, QUT News. Time now for a look at the weather. Starting around the southeast, plenty of sunshine in most centres. Brisbane and Sunshine Coast had tops of 26. And 25 for the Gold Coast and Ipswich. Around the nation tomorrow, Sydney will have a top of 20. A chilly start in Canberra with zero degrees, isolated showers for Melbourne and Hobart. North of Hobart may receive patches of frost early in the morning. In the top end, Darwin should be a warm 34 and back to Queensland. And Mount Isa, Cairns, Rockhampton and Longreach all should reach the low 30s. Townsville will have a top of 29 and expect 28 for Bundaberg. The outlook for Brisbane over the next three days, sun Thursday and Friday. Saturday could see a possible storm with a top of 25 degrees. That brings you up to date with the weather. And that's all the news we have for now. We'll be back tomorrow with more QUT news. Goodbye. Goodbye.